Let us discuss now uh, global navigation satellite system spoofing, spoofing detection, spoofing cancellation, and we'll conclude with uh, jamming cancellation. Uh, global navigation satellite system is a generic name for uh, positioning navigation and timing system based on uh, satellite signal uh, transfer. Uh, so that's the American GPS global positioning system, the European Galileo, the Chinese Beidou. Um, so what we would like to address is uh, how can we uh, secure this uh, signal reception. Uh, this is a sequel to the, the presentation we gave at FOSDEM, which was about uh, spoofing demonstration. It will uh, rely on GNU radio, and actually not GNU radio itself, but its superset, which is GNSSDR, the Global Navigation Satellite System Software Defined Radio Receiver. And we'll be discussing embedded uh, Linux and, and running all these uh, guys on, on, uh, on Raspberry Pi. So we'll be relying on Blue to create an efficient um, uh, software distribution. So what's, what's the issue with uh, uh, GNSS uh, spoofing? So as a reminder, spoofing is introducing erroneous signal as opposed to jamming, which is a loss of, of service. So spoofing is more challenging because you believe that you have uh, some sort of information which is actually erroneous because it's been introduced by someone else and it's not the genuine information. So uh, this, this widely uh, uh, cited uh, UK study uh, whose uh, validity I cannot comment on, but uh, states that uh, GPS disruption uh, would induce a, a billion pounds uh, per day on the UK economy due to the various services relying on GPS, whether positioning, whether time transfer in uh, uh, stock exchange transaction, uh, smart grid synchronization, uh, mobile phone uh, tower synchronization. So basically GPS has become ubiquitous and, and uh, losing this kind of service will have significant impact on, on, economy, on the economy. If you look at uh, notification in the UK of, of the GPS jamming exercises. Uh, you see here on, on this website when, when the UK military is testing their GPS jamming uh, uh, hardware, um, uh, planes flying at 30,000 feet uh, above mean sea level, that's basically uh, commercial civilian planes, will be affected to a range of 112 kilometers. So it's, it's really a, a wide uh, issue about this, this uh, jamming uh, capability. So in, in, uh, the, in uh, FOSDEM 2019, we were demonstrated uh, how uh, easy it was to spoof GPS using a Pluto SDR running Pluto GPS SIM. And our contribution was to uh, address how you needed a proper, a proper uh, reference clock to um, uh, generate a signal that would be uh, mimicking properly uh, the, the uh, uh, atomic clocks uh, on board uh, the, the satellite. Otherwise, uh, the, the, the ground-based receiver phase locked loop uh, would not uh, properly lock and, and a higher grade GPS receiver would not be fooled. So uh, by running the Pluto SDR clocked by, uh, by uh, an oven control crystal oscillator, we could mimic the short term stability of the atomic clock and fool most uh, GPS receiver, actually all the GPS receiver, uh, civilian GPS receiver single uh, channel that we, that we addressed. So uh, technology is always uh, easy to fool. Uh, a properly generated signal will always uh, look uh, genuine to a, to a hardware receiver. Uh, but on the other hand, physics is much harder to fool. And our approach will be to rely on direction of arrival under the assumption that a genuine uh, constellation has uh, satellites uh, spread all over uh, the space uh, at various elevation and azimuth, as opposed to a single spoofing or jamming source whose uh, uh, signal will be coming from, from a single direction. And, and this will be our uh, way of identifying spoofing and then cancelling uh, spoofing or jamming. Initially, we were working with uh, the low cost DBBT receivers. Uh, GPS L1 is, is a bit more than a megahertz bandwidth. So uh, you actually need to take a bit more uh, to uh, reliably decode the GPS L1. So we sample at 1.1 mega sample per second. And if you use multiple DBBT receivers, synchronize in a common oscillator uh, with some time delay uh, calibration, then you can do this uh, analysis using low-cost DVB-T receivers. Throughout this presentation, we'll be relying on the ATUS Research B210 uh, fitted with the AD9361 uh, analog device radio frequency front end with its dual inputs, allowing for uh, a, a coherent uh, collection of, of data from two antennas. 
So what is uh, the processing uh, that, we, that we're looking at? Uh, we wish to uh, embed uh, all our work on, on a single board computer, on Raspberry Pi, and this means we need computationally efficient approaches and uh, one very well-known uh, computationally efficient way of, of analyzing GPS signal is uh, to uh, look at uh, codeless processing. Codeless processing means we're going to cancel the uh, spectrum spreading uh, modulation from the GPS uh, signal, which is the code division multiple access pseudorandom code and the navigation information, which is modulated as a binary phase shifting, BPSK modulation. And uh, the signal that we receive with antenna, from antenna A uh, from satellite I will be affected by the spectrum spreading modulation by a Doppler shift because all satellites are at different places in space and anyway your local oscillator is not an atomic clock so it will be shifted offset with respect to the, to the GPS frequency and you've got a geometric phase which is the time it takes for the wave to reach one antenna or the other. Uh, of course, uh, each antenna is affected by different amplitude, which is the radiation pattern of the antenna. So this is actually the signal that you get, and the well-known uh, codeless processing states that by squaring the signal, we get rid of the binary phase shift key modulation because BPSK uh, uses a phase of zero or pi. So by squaring the signal, we take twice the argument. Twice the argument is zero or two pi, and two pi modulo two pi is zero. So this means that we've removed uh, the, the spectrum spreading information, and we're only left with uh, the Doppler shift and uh, the geometric phase. Now the Doppler shift allows us to still recover the information of which satellite is at which position in space because we have uh, different satellites with different Doppler shifts. And if we want to only analyze the phase, uh, geometric phase from one antenna to the other, then by taking the ratio of the Fourier transform at bin index delta omega here, so the, the, the uh, satellite uh, number delta omega i here, uh, then we cancel this common term which is found by both antennas and we're only left with the amplitude of uh, each uh, uh, antenna reception and the geometric phase difference. And this geometric phase difference is the information that we're going to analyze to detect uh, spoofing. If all these phases are close to one another, then it means that a spoofing attack is occurring because all the geometric phases are coming from the same direction, all the signals are coming from the same direction and creating the same phase difference, as opposed to a genuine constellation where uh, the satellites are widely spread in space and they will create different phases from different uh, direction of arrivals. So how, do, how does this look like? Here is an example of post-processing uh, in a genuine constellation when new spoofing is occurring. You see that the angle of arrival of all uh, these uh, satellites that we're receiving are different. And if all these uh, antenna uh, are detecting different phase differences, it means that we have a genuine constellation. Uh, the ratio of the magnitude of the signal received by the different antennas are different as well, meaning that this is a genuine constellation. As opposed to the spoofing case, where you see that all the satellites that you're receiving are exhibiting very close values of a phase difference. Similarly, the magnitude uh, ratio between these two antennas are very close, and this will be the signature of, uh, of a spoofing occurring. So this is how we're going to analyze uh, spoofing detection by taking the standard deviation on the uh, sorted phase, and if uh, enough phase are close to one another, we know that uh, spoofing is, is occurring. Now, detecting spoofing is one thing, but now we want to recover the original information, the, the genuine cancellation information to uh, recover the service. And this is spoofing cancellation. This is part of the general field of uh, control reception pattern antenna, CRPA, where you try to form a node to cancel the signal that is uh, uh, disturbing your receiver. In our case, we have two antennas, so by interfering, interference of these two signals, we can create one node, uh, hence the assumption that there's a single spoofing source. And the question is, how do you identify the weight that will allow you to cancel uh, the signal received by a second antenna when you apply the subtraction on the first antenna? Now, uh, we see here that on a genuine constellation, x-axis is the index of the satellite, so that's a Doppler shift, y is the phase. In a genuine constellation, all the Dopplers are different and the phase for each Doppler is different, meaning different direction of arrival, as opposed to a spoofing where the spoofer is well enough designed so that the different Doppler shifts are introduced, 
but the physics tells you all the phases are coming from the same all the things are coming from the same directions so but all the phases are the same and actually this phase here is twice uh, the phase because we've squared so we have twice the argument this phase is twice the direction of arrival that you need to introduce to cancel this signal so by using this weight here we can eliminate the uh, uh, the, the disturbing signal and recover the original information. So does this work? Well, uh, we can look at this in a, in, in a, in a Doppler uh, space vehicle number chart where we have here the Doppler shift, we have here the uh, space vehicle number and uh, the color is a correlation. So the genuine constellation is initially recorded where you have here a few satellites with low PRN numbers. And if we start spoofing, you see here these additional satellites that do not uh, exist. Uh, these are the spoofing signals. And you've got the case here that sometimes at a given uh, X index, we have multiple uh, GPS uh, uh, Doppler uh, shifts, uh, which means that there would be two, sat uh, two satellites with the same identifier uh, at different uh, azimuth elevation, which is, of course, physically impossible. If we apply uh, the cleaning procedure that we just mentioned by using this weight calculation and, and, and subtracting from one on 10 other signal from the second one, you indeed see here that all these additional satellites that were introduced by the uh, spoofing has been, have been uh, cancelled. And additionally, these uh, multiple satellites at the same uh, x-axis have as well been removed. So this means that the cleaning procedure seems to be working. Uh, similarly, if we look this in the time domain, here you see the attenuation that is introduced on the spoofing signal because we're using the Pluto SDR. We know that the Pluto SDR is emitting a continuous wave of uh, 1 milliwatt 0 dBm uh, at zero attenuation and, and Pluto GPS sim allows you to tune the attenuation. So this is the weakest spoofing signal. This is the strongest spoofing signal. You see here the, the magnitude of the weight. You see here the phase of the weight and whatever the, the spoofing characteristics, you see that the magnitude and the phase are the same, meaning that we can now cancel the spoofing signal. Here you have the full constellation with the satellite number as a function of time. So you've got all these guys here that are the spoofing signals that will be cancelled during the cleaning procedure. So this is your clean constellation. This is your spoof constellation. So this hints at, at, at a working procedure. Now, uh, demonstrating this uh, on, on, on uh, uh, such chart doesn't demonstrate that we actually can recover the, 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 the genuine information. So to do this, we're going to run GNSSDR, so the Software Defined Radio Global Navigation Satellite System Decoder. And here is our experimental setup. We've got uh, two antennas here facing a clear sky view so that we can uh, collect the genuine information. Here we've got our spoofing signal, spoofing signal with uh, Pluto SDR clocked by the oven control crystal oscillator on OCXO. Here we've got the B210 with its two inputs and the two inputs will allow us to apply CRPA algorithm to try and cancel the, uh, uh, the, uh, the spoofing signal. Uh, now, uh, Pluto SDR, uh, GNSSDR is a, is, a, is, is a superset of, of new radio. So when you're familiar with new radio, as, as described here by Carlos Fernandez at, at the Software Defined Radio Academy presentation in 2019, uh, if you're familiar with new radio, you, you easily can uh, write your custom block. Uh, here is an example of, uh, of our custom block uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, constructor, uh, so the new radio block constructor, uh, up to between 1 and 20 inputs. Uh, we're going to use two of them. A single output, uh, here you've got uh, the number of items that you need to process and, and uh, the pointer of pointer where you've got your input items uh, with uh, the IQ stream that you want to analyze. And all these uh, processing new radio processing blocks will be connected between each other. Here you've got the uh, B210 source, which is connected to our custom uh, uh, spoofing detection block. And uh, at the end, you have to tell GNSSDR what is the rightmost uh, uh, step in your analysis. In this case, it, it's a signal source. So you, you claim that your spoofing detector is the last uh, signal source block that will be connected to the next processing step. So it, although GNSSDR looks quite impressive at first sight, uh, it, it's very well organized. And, and you, if you're familiar with new radio programming, it, it's really easy to understand how, how, it's, how it's organized. So running this kind of analysis, it's useful to understand the messages uh, provided by, by GNSSDR. So initially, GNSSDR will just give you its internal uh, state machine, and it starts by telling you that it will affect one of its analysis channels. So that's the number, uh, how many channels, how many satellites can be analyzed simultaneously. 
and it will sweep through all the possible pseudo random numbers or so space vehicle numbers. And this just tells you that now GNSSDR is analyzing a space vehicle number 11 on channel number three. So that's just internal uh, state machine. Uh, it doesn't tell you anything interesting. Now, what tells you that your hardware is working properly is when GNSSDR starts uh, finding the bit synchronization. So it means that it was looking for all the satellites and it found the Doppler shift for this space vehicle number. And this means you have uh, a, a reliable, useful radio frequency signal uh, that will allow you to work with, with a GPS information. Now, once you've identified uh, the, the, the Doppler shift, you start the, the phase locked loop and uh, or delay locked loop, and this uh, DLL will allow you to finally uh, tune the phase so that at some point you can decode the navigation message. So this means uh, the tracking is working properly and space vehicle number 11 has been uh, properly uh, decoded and because we need at least four satellites to solve uh, the three uh, dimensional space and time solution, when you've got four satellites uh, whose navigation message are properly uh, analyzed, then you can get a position. This is our position in France, 47 uh, degree north, six degree east. That's our proper position. So indeed the, the GNSSDR is working properly. So uh, if you start the spoofing software, so Pluto GPS SIM, you create a false uh, constellation and a GNSSDR, if you have a properly tuned uh, local oscillator and, and Doppler shift offset range, as you see here that these satellite numbers will be decoded by GNSSDR and the uh, spoofing position will be decoded that's west of France uh, in, in Brittany and that's an erroneous position. Now we can demonstrate that our uh, cleaning procedure is working because if we start the same Pluto GPS pin spoofing activity, but this time we activate our spoofing uh, detection, you've got here the little warning that tells you there is spoofing that has been detected because all the phases have a small standard deviation, they're all very close to each other. And when GNSSDR is going to decode the output of our processing block, you see here that the space vehicle numbers are not part of the spoofing satellite. So this means that we have cleaned the signal from the spoofing information and the genuine position is decoded as verified by deactivating Pluto GPS SIM and this is the same position that has been decoded here. So cleaning procedure is working properly with post-processing. This is a general chart uh, demonstrating how uh, well this is working. So because uh, GNSSDR randomly initializes its variable, you don't have uh, always the same solution. So in this case, you get a percentage. Uh, here is the attenuation of uh, the spoofing signal. And actually what you see is that the stronger the spoofing signal, the easier it is to detect the weight and the better the cleaning ability. We've got multiple uh, algorithms. Uh, this is the raw collected data. Uh, we have uh, an algorithm that we're going to discuss later for uh, jamming cancellation, which is a least square solution. We've got what we just discussed, uh, the uh, square root of uh, the Fourier transform uh, of the squared signal ratio. And uh, we've got a reference article here, low complexity GPS anti-spoofing method, which implements uh, this uh, detector here. Uh, this is the last column here. And what you see is our method allows to recover the genuine uh, correct position in all cases Whereas if you don't do anything, the spoofing signal will create the wrong position in most uh, strong uh, spoofing characteristics. Just uh, as a demonstration of how easy uh, Vogue programming is, uh, when you want to implement this equation in Vogue, it just uh, summarized as a single uh, line here because you've got your two inputs, uh, antenna number zero and antenna number one, and you just need to use the uh, complex float multiply conjugate and you've got uh, this uh, S1 times S2 uh, complex conjugate multiplication done for you. So that's, that's really easy to implement. And we demonstrate here that we can uh, recover uh, the genuine constellation in all cases of, of this uh, spoofing. Sometimes actually GNSSDR does not find any uh, solution at all. That's uh, for the three minute data that were collected for, for each run. Um, well, the next step is real-time uh, spoofing cancellation and real-time spoofing cancellation is most interesting if your, uh, if your spoofing source is mobile. So here you've got the Pluto SDR spoofing source, which is on this little trolley here that is going to move. Uh, over here is our colleague uh, looking at the two antenna separated by 10 centimeters. Here is the trolley with the spoofing source and the spoofing source is going to move in front of these two antennas and we're going to try to cancel. So initially uh, the trolley is static. 
we wait to uh, get the position and as soon as we start moving here you've got the, the azimuth as the phase of the weight so you see very nicely that we can track the motion of the trolley as it is moving however uh, GNSSDR will lose the position at some point by diverging uh, so uh, in this case uh, we lost the position as the trolley was moving tried to recover the position lost it again uh, we repeated the, the measurement many times so actually we can find the direction of the spoofing source but we will lose uh, the, the position and uh, we've checked that if we do not apply a spoofing cancellation then the receiver is always fooled in the uh, erroneous position 48 degree north uh, 4 degree west in Brittany so, so this is working very well just as a side note, uh, this is uh, just a demonstration of why it is mandatory to use uh, a new um, build rule to create your, uh, your uh, GNSSDR embedded uh, uh, implementation. Uh, we ported new radio and GNSSDR to build root, and here is a demonstration of build root performance versus uh, the, the binary Raspbian uh, operating system. And actually what happens is that because Raspbian is a general uh, generic uh, distribution, even on its 64-bit kernel, it doesn't know about the, the SIMD, the, the single instruction multiple data VOLC extension. And this means that the NEON uh, feature of these uh, uh, CPU will not be used. So what you see here is that on the Raspbian, you always have a generic software implementation of each function, whereas uh, uh, build root will allow you to use uh, the SIMD extension with much, much better uh, improved performance. You see here that we got uh, three to seven times uh, performance. Uh, and even when there is no neon uh, implementation of your uh, Volk algorithm, uh, the performance are similar in build root than in, in Raspbian. So really you should uh, compile your custom image and not rely on a binary implementation of, of, of the of new radio. Of course, uh, running this at full speed using performance uh, settings will make your Raspberry uh, Pi 4 hot. Uh, here, the temperature of the core raised to 80 degree. You see here that with the heat, heat sink, we went to 72 degree. We try to document in great detail how you might want to compile build root for the Raspberry Pi 4, including uh, GNSSDR and, and GNU radio. So this is all documented on this website. Okay, so now we've got uh, spoofing uh, cancellation. Now we would like to address jamming cancellation. Jamming cancellation is a bit more difficult because in jamming, you cannot use the assumption on the structure of this uh, uh, interfering signal. We knew that with uh, spoofing, it was a BPSK signal, but in jamming, we have no idea what it looks like. So again, we need to find a way of computing this weight alpha uh, so that the clean signal is the first antenna signal clean from the signal detecting the second antenna. And this is a classical least square optimization problem where if you've got these two data set S1 and S2, then by using the total inverse, because this is a very long vector, much longer uh, then it's wide so that the inverse doesn't exist. So the total inverse is your data set transpose times your data set. This is a square matrix that you can invert. And the total inverse will give you the least square optimal solution to finding this weight. What does it tell us? Well, what you see here is that uh, with jamming, we can detect uh, the, the least square solution. Here we have the weight of the jamming signal. And you've got another way of doing this, which is uh, close to the correlation, which is taking the Fourier transform uh, of the first uh, antenna divided by the second one uh, division to try to cancel the magnitude difference but again using the ratio of uh, complex will sw we'll, um, swap time and this is a close to a correlation and least square or um, inverse filtering solution are consistent but they're not the same when jamming is occurring, you see that you have a high value for this correlation, whereas it's very weak when there is no jamming. So actually we have an indicator where the jamming is occurring beyond the loss of uh, service. Uh, this uh, estimator here will allow us to detect whether jamming is occurring or not. Uh, again, we apply the least square optimal solution to a jamming uh, problem. And uh, again, we've got a hundred runs. Uh, we bought one of these very stupid uh, jammers. It's 10 euro on, on Amazon. Uh, it's just a frequency swept uh, VCO. And what you see here is that if the jammer is very far from the receiver, then no jamming is occurring. The, the jamming signal is too weak. The correct position is always recovered. If we bring the jammer closer, then uh, we never get the genuine position uh, without uh, cleaning the signal. We always get no solution, but our algorithm allows us 
to clean the, uh, the jamming signal up to a point where we are too close and, and uh, we uh, cannot recover the genuine signal. I should emphasize here that we remove the antenna and we just replace the antenna with an SMA connector. This guy is emitting 10 dBm, 10 milliwatt, and uh, we needed to have a very local jamming. Uh, so we just this is just the SMA connector radiating uh, around this, this jamming source. Now, because we want to implement this on, on a, a Pluto SDR, uh, on, on the Raspberry Pi, we cannot rely on total inverse calculations. So you have uh, all these data streams for the two antennas. And we addressed this problem last, uh, the last year. Uh, my, my colleague, uh, Stéphane Chrétien, uh, introduced uh, us to a, an iterative algorithm for finding the optimal weight alpha here as, as an uh, optimal solution to this least square minimization error. And this means uh, uh, canceling the gradient. So if you want to cancel the gradient of, uh, of this uh, least square minimization solution, uh, then you uh, solve this. So you take the, the gradient of this uh, matrix uh, term. So your square here comes out to cancel the two. And you've got the uh, 2a here coming as h transpose times the term over here. And uh, this is your first antenna signal, second antenna signal, the weight that you try to find. And here you've got the iterative solution where the new weight is equal to the old weight minus a, a learning rate times this cancellation uh, term here. And this is the tunable uh, parameter where you want to try to change the learning rate to, to converge as quickly as possible, but still being stable. I'm not versed enough in this whole demonstration, so you might as well have a look at, at the uh, Wikipedia demonstration of how uh, stochastic gradient is working. But again, just to show you, initially we switch on GNSSDR. This was implemented for real-time analysis in GNSSDR. Initially, you search uh, for the constellation and you start tracking, then you get a position. Here we start jamming, you see that the position is kept. We stop jamming or we move the jammer and still the position is kept. In this example here, for example, the, the two uh, antennas were rotated 0 degree, 90 degree, 0 degree with respect to the jamming source. And again, you see that uh, jamming will uh, be kept. Actually, it doesn't work always so well. Most of the time we will lose uh, the position as we're moving the jammer because GSSDR will forget at some point uh, what was the constellation. So this is constant jamming. We cancel the jamming, we move the jammer here, we kept the position, although the standard deviation rises a little bit. But at some point, GSSDR lost the position and then it took quite some time to recover the position. Again, when we moved, we lost the position. So. Uh, there is still some reliability issue, but still we can cancel. Of course, we check that if we do not cancel the jamming signal, no position is recovered because jamming is, is excessive, excessively strong. So to conclude this presentation, we try to demonstrate how uh, um, software defined radio can be used to address GPS proofing detection cancellation as well as jamming cancellation. All this uh, demonstrating the genuine position recovery using uh, GNSSDR for post-processing or real-time analysis. We addressed computationally efficient technique as uh, codeless decoding, stochastic gradient descent, so that all this works on Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 single board computer. Although this was all uh, demonstrated on GPS L1 only, the additional workload that we introduced here still allowed for real-time analysis, uh, whether this can be applicable to more complex, uh, newer modulation scheme remains to be demonstrated. All software is available on the GitHub. You can uh, find our fork of GNSSDR with uh, spoofing and jamming cancellation software. Uh, feel free to download this. This has been ported to the very new uh, 0.13 GNSSDR, that's the latest release. Here is the experimental setup with the B210, BIOS T, each going to each antenna, and the Raspberry Pi also analyzing uh, the DVB-T receiver here. And perspective is to extend this capability to L5 or E5, which have a wider bandwidth. Uh, the code uh, is 10 times longer, so that the bandwidth is, takes 10 times more uh, computational power. And if there is this uh, subcarrier bulk modulation, which has been addressed uh, for codeless analysis, but still this needs to be ported. And we need to improve uh, reliability uh, of uh, the cleaning procedure and especially try to uh, convince GNSSDR to remember what was the state of the constellation as uh, the, the weight uh, need to adapt to cancel the jammer and the spoofer. And with this, I thank you for your attention.